want to introduce everyone here to you so you know who you're speaking to. So I think me, you know by now. Um, Yasmin, uh, she is our event management team lead and she's at the same time working with Yelte on a startup grind at China. And Tico, she's one of the co-directors with me, Sabrina. She um, is also in the event management team, but she's actually also very much involved with uh, my organization that I have, German Innovators in China. Um, yeah, so that's basically the ones you're speaking to now. And another Sabrina should come online soon, but I think she's only a panelist, so you won't see her. Um, she is the director of our Startup Grand Beijing um, chapter. Yeah, and the fourth one that we have, he is in Ecuador right now. And uh, yeah, he is also working with a startup there. So uh, he's a little busy right now in South America. Yeah. <laughs> right. Hello, ladies. Pleasure to meet you oh, guys. Wow, G is here. Hello. Hmm? Hi, G. <laughs> How do you sorry. see that? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. Ah, I got it. Okay. So, can you hear my music? Yes. yes. Awesome. Very good. Perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, welcome everyone and feel free to introduce yourselves in the chat box. Uh, we are very happy to host you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So first of all, we're going to start uh, with a quick introduction now. So I'm going to give the word to Tico. Thank you, Katya. Can you hear me well? Yes, all good. Okay. Um, uh, Yasmin, I think I don't see myself um, as a video, but it's okay if it should be so. It's okay. Yes. You are seen. Oh, nice. Okay. Uh, so next slide, please. I'll be doing startup grant introduction, which is very much needed because um, we are largest startup grant community and we try to inspire, connect and educate entrepreneurs around the world. Um, next slide, Yasmin, please. Um, so a short history about Startup Grind. It was founded in uh, Silicon Valley 10 years ago in 2010. Um, and it just started from Silicon Valley and now we are spread into 125 countries among 600 cities and we are gathering 2 million entrepreneurs around the globe, which is really, really cool and we're proud of it. Uh, what Startup Grind does, uh, we do events, we do media um, and other partnerships with organizations like Amazon and many other uh, great um, companies. Uh, next slide, please. Um, yes, this is my favorite part though, because this got me to be a member of Startup Grind Beijing um, and Startup Grind in globally. We have three main values, which is give first, don't take, make friends, not contacts, and help others before yourself. And among all of these three, every uh, value is my favorite, but if you ask me, make friends is my favorite because we do the job with uh, our friends and we love each other very, very much. So yeah, if you want to get in touch with us, be friendly, be nice, and we will be always welcoming you and willing to help you. Next slide, please. Yes, these are our past speakers, not only Beijing, not only Tbilisi or not only other cities, but globally. Um, you see many uh, beautiful faces and beautiful companies here. Uh, next slide, please. These are uh, leaders that attended our events globally. You see Amazon, you see Huawei, who uh, like these are um, um, and well, these are companies that attend our events. We are very very thankful uh, for their support. And next slide, please. 
Yes, this is our partners um, in, in China. Um, you see many uh, familiar uh, logos um, and companies. We thank all of them because without them, it would be super hard to do events um, um, any city in China. And let's now um, dig into the Greater China chapters. Uh, in 2019, we did more than 200 events. Wow, this is a good number and 12,000 attendees we had. All among these attendees, 70% were Chinese. And you see here on the map, uh, red bubbles and also blue signs, blue triangles, which means um, in the blue triangle cities, we have also university chapters, um, and we have in total uh, 22 active chapters and eight university chapters. And if, if you want to be a part of us to get uh, newest updates, please follow our um, WeChat official account, which is Startup Brand China. Um, on the poster, you see a couple of QR codes. These are for official WeChat accounts or the group chat in the WeChat. Um, and one more thing that I wanted to say, uh, this event today is brought by Startup Brand Beijing, Startup Brand Tbilisi and AWS and German Innovators in China. Um, and we welcome everyone, ev every Tbilisi member who just joined here. Thank you very much. Um, and uh, thank you all also German Innovators and Amazon and Startup Brand Beijing for your amazing job. Uh, Katya, how are you? The stage is all yours. You can take Take it over. Thank you, Tico. All right. So I hope everyone feels good today. I hope you're all safe and sound. It's um, very different times right now, I'd say. And um, yeah, so also in that regard, um, I'm actually pretty proud to be part of this organization. Like usually we host our offline events and our city chapters. But this time we actually uh, joined hands between four chapters and um, Startup Grind Beijing, Tbilisi, um, Startup Grind Berlin and also Startup Grind Kuching in Malaysia. So thank you guys for really making this global and to show that we're actually one big family. And now I think we're going to start for what we're actually here for to speak to Warren. So I give the stage to you so you can introduce yourself. Thank you, Katia. Hello, everyone. It's, um, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, so my name is Warren Lee. So I work for uh, Amazon Web Services and lead the Greater China team the early stage startup business development. Um, so I joined Amazon four years ago before I first started as a consultant um, with Deloitte and McKinsey and sort of worked around the world for about eight years. And then I went to business school, so I studied in France, Singapore, um, and then joined the private equity fund investment. Um, so yeah, so happy to be here. Awesome. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having you. <laughs> We're happy to have you, yes. All right, so the first question I think that we definitely need to ask, can you explain us what is culture of innovation? Thank you. Well, that's a very German start of, <laughs> you know, asking questions. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, uh, first, um, I must say there is no official definition of culture innovation. What we normally talk <laughs> about that is like, you know, how the culture here at Amazon <laughs> encourages innovation. Um, if people know about Amazon, like, you know, we have 14 leadership principles and this whole organization is actually built around that. Mm -hmm. So my definition of culture innovation would be a few of the leadership principles, which are custom obsession, meaning if you want to do something, you start from your customers really need. And then second, think big. Right, you know what they need, try to 10x it. And the third, we will call that have backbone, disagree and commit. So you really need to be able to challenge the status quo and the authorities in order to make something new. In the end, um, on top of those culture here in Amazon, we actually have a framework. I can probably elaborate a bit more later, which is called working backwards. We always, mm -hmm. you know, whenever we want to do something in Amazon, we work backwards. We start from the results we'd like to achieve, which is generated from what customers want, right? And we work backwards to, to figure out what kind of effort and what approaches would be needed to make that happen. And what would be the metrics to measure that um, 
in order to deliver the results we really want for our customers. So put all these together would be my personal definition of culture of innovation. Mm. Awesome. Okay. I think it absolutely makes sense. Yes. So as you said, like, this is like your approach. This is how like Amazon cultivates that. I mean, of course, I think every company is having, like you have different principles, you have different visions and everything, but why would you then say like, why should someone actually implement it? Like what can you achieve through it? Or what would you potentially also say, when can it become harmful or what could be harmful? Uh, yeah, in a way that when we always try to say, oh, why, why, you know, why culture of innovation, you know, why does it yeah. work? Or does it really work? Right? And then you definitely need to take a look at the history of Amazon. Right? Amazon started its online bookstore and then it started to think big and see, hey, you know, if customers would like to buy books from us, what about groceries? What about clothes? What about CDs? So they're trying to expand that. And what is really important in the history of Amazon is, I think it's, um, it's, it's about 13 years ago. Um, so Amazon started to think, so we are using very heavy IT system within the organization. What if we can mm -hmm. buy this IT system to our customers? And, and, and that, that makes AWS, by the way. So it's also, it was also going through the entire process, what I just said, right? They were saying, hey, Customers really want to have elasticity. They don't want to, um, you know, buy servers. They don't want to um, provision a lot of resources, which they're not going to use all the time. They just want to pay as you go. And then we figure out that's the demand. And then we figure out, like, if we really think it big and potentially 100 exit, then um, that makes uh, AWS. And, of course, there are a lot of things. You've got um, a Prime, all these kind of things, all these innovations came from um, our culture of, of, of those leadership principles plus the uh, working backwards methodology. So I would say like, you know, if you really want to be successful and really make things big and successful, do have a try. Nice. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. So, I mean, Amazon, like you have history, right? You're, you're not very new. Like everyone knows you by now already in 2020. Um, so from your experience now and like also from like your history and what you've learned throughout the years already, where would you say that you should actually start implementing your culture of innovation in your company? Like, where do you start? Oh, I'll definitely say like, you know, from, from, from the very beginning of your, 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 your company, I, um, I met with a, I met with an entrepreneur this, this noon for lunch and he just started his company, like, you know, three months ago and was talking about. Um, how important to just motivate these, you know, first hand employees to be innovative and to be able to generate new ideas all the time. Um, but I really wanted to say is like, you know, you, you can't really change people as much, you know, like, especially we're adults. We are, I mean, we're, we're, we're sort of like, you know, uh, they're formed already, but like, of course, we, we're, there's certain flexibility, but, but in most cases, like, you know, the flexibility goes down, you know, when we grow older. So the, the key point is, is really to hire the right kind of people for your organization, the kind of people who can actually embrace your, let's say, culture of innovation, embrace your methodology, and, and think it's really good and would like to, to adopt um, and promote it. So having those people join your organization, uh, that's actually halfway to success, rather than change mm -hmm. people who are uh, sort of you know, against this kind of culture and try to change them completely. All right. I think I would I would love to dig a little bit into um, like the human aspect of it. But one quick question for you as well. So like, what would you say, like what kind of framework would you still need to build in your company that you actually can really embrace your culture? Right. So, so the first thing I said, right, working backwards. So you, you know where you yeah. want to start first and you work backwards. There is there is a lot of content there, like you can probably Google it and find out more details. There's actually a, a book we could have, you know, wrote. Um, but another thing I would like to recommend to, to people um, here, especially to entrepreneurs, is really um, write it down. So here in, in Amazon, whenever we have an idea, we have to write a Word document. We do not do 
PowerPoint, which is a bit uh -huh. odd for me when, when I first joined because I worked in consulting for like eight years, right? Like I did tons of PowerPoints. I love it. Yeah. Um, but, but having your ideas written down on Word documents, Clarify your goals and, um, and 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 the approaches, and then make sure uh, that you have a very clear uh, target that you plan to do to to hit. Um, that helps you think through the entire idea and make it really, really realistic and actionable. Mm -hmm. So write it down. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> Great. Okay. So. If you speak about human beings, right? I mean, we're still like every, we're still at the center of everything as well. So, um, like you say, like we've become less flexible with age, and I would also definitely agree to that. Um, but still, when you hire, like um, you have your own team, right? So you embrace your culture. How do you actually like when you start hiring people for your team? What do you put an eye on? Like, what would you also recommend people who would love to be part of this? What can they do for themselves? Like, what should they bring with them? Or where would you say, like, here, this and that is something um, that you can work on? Or, like, any recommendations? Like, read a book or, like, as you said right now, you write down. But how do you hire people? What do you put an eye on? Right. I, I, I love the hiring culture here at Amazon. Mm -hmm. um, I have I have done over 200 interviews over the past two years myself. Oh. <laughs> um, so I can explain how the process works in Amazon. See, like you know, it's it, it's meaningful for your for your startups or, or your own company organizations. Let's say. So in Amazon, um, we so first thing we call that um, bar raising. So for anyone hired for Amazon, it has to be better than the 50 percent of that level. Mm -hmm. and that person is applying for that makes sure like you know we're hiring or we're making the organization better and better right by hiring above average people into the organization so that's the first thing so that's the principle that's how you make decision and then second we look at two um aspects so first we look at functional fit so for example if you are um applying for a software developer position right you need to be strong in coding you need to know a lot of different languages you need to have this basic uh, you know technologies and then you have to of course raise the bar within those functional fits uh, mm. of, 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 of that level right so bar raising for functional fit and the second thing we really care about culture fit and then mm -hmm. we put normally um three to four rounds of interviews. The first two to three, they're all, you know, one-on-one and they test you about function of fit. The final round would be normally like five to six people. Of course, one-on-one. -on -one. Each would spend an hour with you. And each one of them will be assigned to sometimes three leadership principles. So the candidate will need to provide examples of how um, you know, his experiences or stories or her experiences or stories that reflect the leadership principles that we would like to test or see from that position. And within that five or six final interviewers, we call that loop, loop interviewers, um, there will be one person, we call that bar raiser. So the bar raiser does not come from the organization that is, uh, or the department that is hiring for this position. But this person is someone who has been with the organization for a long time, has done a lot of interviews, and knows very well about where the bar should be set, culturally. And that person has a veto power. So the hiring manager and the bar raiser have to agree with each other in order to extend an offer. Um, so in that way, we really, really make sure, like, you know, those people we hire, um, you know, about both functional and culture fit with his organization. At the same time, they're better than the average. So system-wise, like, you know, we want to make yeah. sure, like, you know, we are becoming better and better by hiring those people. Awesome. Absolutely makes sense. Super interesting. So maybe we can move to that point that we say you found your people you would love to hire and, like, yeah, they're in, embedded in your culture of innovation as well. So 
you, as you said, like you would love people, like they should be creative, they should really bring up ideas also themselves. So how do you then actually make sure that like if you let people be creative and you really also let them try to develop something on their own, like as you said, like Amazon Go, for example, came through that. How do you then also really make sure that that process um, is going in the right direction and you're actually moving somewhere and it's not becoming a bit of like an uncoordinated, messy process? Right. So, so again, uh, coming back to what I just just mentioned, right? So um, again, the first priority within this company is always being customer obsessed. So you mm -hmm. always start from what your customers need and you need to obviously write a document and provide a lot of data points so we um in amazon have a very interesting writing culture so we do not so we are very strict about those words you use in your in your writing so we don't like words like very significantly um you know those kind of adjectives so instead we would say so if we say, oh, uh, the sales has grown significantly compared to last year, and then we should do blah, 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 blah. Now in, in, in Amazon, we don't do that. I mean, this is going to be a big no from, from the leadership. In, in, instead, we would say the sales has grown 50% compared to last year um, versus the growth rate last year was, let's say, 20%. In that way, it's very clear. Faster than last year, it's a good number. So with all those data points, you'll be able to justify um, how realistic the opportunity is. I mean, and how, how strong customer needs actually um, you, can, you, can, you can get from, from, from that. And um, then the third thing is always like, you know, write a document, right? Like, you know, if you, again, you write it down, do not do discussion. In, in, in Amazon, typical Amazon meeting, there will be, you have a document ready, so we have one pager, three pages, six pages, three formats. Mm -hmm. And then at the very beginning, the 15, uh, first 15 minutes will always be like, oh, let's read documents and leave your comment and questions. We normally don't really do like, we don't take random questions. We say, hey, if you have a question, have a comment, write it on the document. And then um, the author would actually go through each questions and comments. And in the end, you have, you know, a bunch of follow-up items and you you do another iteration of your document and do another round of review. In the end, make sure your document is flawless and actionable. So um, the risks in a way can be controlled. Very good. Yeah, awesome. Um, I would love to actually throw in quickly a question um, from one of our uh, participants because it's related to it as well. So. This is, I think that's more like you see it now from an individual perspective, right? For me, when I hear what you're saying, I try to work on myself and I try to really like, like implement what you're telling me. So how would you then say, like, um, how is it about like getting like these great individuals then into a really highly effective um, team as well? Um. Again, so uh, Amazon has been famously known as, as, as a machine. Like, you know, we, we, we don't really idolize individuals except our founder, <laughs> Jeff Bezos. Um, so Amazon sort of like, you know, makes it into an organization like it's a machine. Like, you know, it doesn't really matter like, you know, who's going to leave, right? As long as the system over there. Um, and then, and then um, it, it always runs in a, in a good you know, condition. Um, but, but in order to make sure um, that's the situation, again, coming back, then hiring is super, super important. You always need to have those veterans who really have, um, you know, very good understanding of the culture and actually are, we call the Amazonians, but like, you know, top Amazonians, they approve every single hire uh, that we take into this organization. Um, so I have personally had a lot of individuals. If you look at the function of it, they're super. But on the other hand, um, I saw red flags on the culture fit. And then I said no a lot of times. And I almost like, you know, fought with hiring managers you know, who, who, who are very senior um, people in the organization. But my point is always like, yes, these are great people. 
But if it doesn't really fit the organization culturally, how can you make sure they can stay here for long? How can you make sure they can grow within the organization? If they don't, they'll leave you within one year and you can go through the entire tedious process again. It doesn't do you good. So yeah. we want to hire, we hire the right person. We make sure he or she is not just functionally fit, but also culturally fit. Makes sense, yeah. I agree. Like it's, you, you better prepare in the beginning instead of like really then correcting your mistakes later on. Um, it absolutely makes sense. So maybe let's go a little bit back from like humans to really the process of innovating. Um, how, what, what do you see failure in here actually? Like when is it part of the process and when do you see failure to actually become harmful? Right. We have a lot of failures in Amazon. Right? We have Fire Phone, tablets, like, you know, these are, <laughs> you, know, you know, renowned failures, you know, for, for, for a company like Amazon. But, but again, I think like, you know, I, I, I have attended a lot of meetings with, uh, with our leadership in, in the US. And they always say um, that we, we internally have this, we call that um, OP1, OP2, that those are uh, meetings, um, you know, we discuss about ideas for next year. We plan, we start planning for next year normally uh, in April. So, so we have mm -hmm. already started planning for 2021. So in each of the documents, there is always a section called Think Big. We always make sure someone is coming up with some big ideas. And we can't make sure like, you know, we're going to invest in every single one of them, but we always, on a process-wise, like make sure that this Think Big part is always there. And Culturally, it's very interesting. Um, so this company or leadership team would never really criticize failures on think big ideas. You can go as mm -hmm. big as you want. And then if it in the end turns out to be a failure, so be it. But what really matters is we need to be able to learn from the failure to make sure we become better the next time. Okay, all right. So you say like, yes, failures happen like, like that's it so to say but how do you then like let's see like you have like your employees they come up with different ideas but they fail a few times so how do you really make sure that you like you keep up their motivation and like you also make them like they're, that they're still satisfied like how do you actually do that right um again i think then it goes back to the coach like you know how we how we evaluate people within the organization, right? So like, yes, we, we look at numbers a lot, right? If, if you're a salesperson, yeah. what's your attainment, right? 100%, 80%, that affects your payroll, um, you know, so on and so forth. But, but um, the interesting thing is when we do promotion, you know, we, this promotion process, we look at leadership principles more than um, your your results or your, or your KPIs, let's say. We always say like, yeah. Oh, yeah, um, we look at KPIs more when we do um, annual performance review. But when we do performance, sorry, when we do promotion review, we look at um, leadership principles. So if you have failed, which means your numbers are probably not very nice, but that's fine. But that failure probably has shown you are excellent in Think Big. And you have taken a great ownership in let's say covering other people's job and then you've been trying to do something which is really in the need of your customers you know execution might be a problem but that should also reflect other uh, leadership principles you know from the initiative you just took despite uh, you know the result might not be as pleasant as you want so i think yeah. that helps motivate people keep trying because you know as long as you know, this is the right thing to do. Um, the organization understands and respects it. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. So going from Amazon or especially like AWS now, um, I think, I mean, people also would love to know, right? Like, how can I actually apply that to my organization or to my business? So I think like also there's a lot of different ones, right? You have startups like SMEs volunteering organizations, corporates, there's a lot of different formats that are actually like, yeah, they're still developing. So you probably can't really dig into all of this right now, but if you would 
need to like differentiate a little bit or give like yeah like startups but also corporates give everyone a bit of an advice of like this is how we do it and we would love you to like also be able to integrate that in your organization can you like shortly elaborate on like how you can do that also with the different forms so just trying to clarify your question so you're saying like you know um, for different types of organizations um, size wise yeah. or you know types wise what would be the um implication exactly uh, right yeah um i think i, I can i can do in, in this way obviously um you know smes or startups um open a very different way compared to, to corporates why well, amazon is really proud of itself is you know we always say it's a day one culture so we sort of like you know especially at aws it's a, it's a younger company right? mm -hmm. Compared to Amazon, yeah, we sort of like you know, say we yeah. are, we are, we are, we are big, but we're still a startup. Um, I think for for companies like SME and startups, like companies who who don't really have a lot of resources, um, two things are very important. Um, one again, being customer obsessed. So know who are your customers and know really, really what are their pain points or what they need. I right? like like what we say for Amazon. Like you know, one thing is always true uh, is that customers always want good products at a cheaper price, <laughs> right? So as long as you work along that, you can make your products better and cheaper. That's always the right thing to do, right? But, but the thing is like, you know, but, but for, as, a, as a small company or like, you know, startup, you also need to act very fast. We call that agility is very important. So um, in Amazon also, there is a way we call that uh, we act on 80% of the data. So like you don't wait, even like in a company like us, like, you know, we don't wait until we have 100% you know, to make a decision. We should be able to, um, you know, comfortably make decisions based on seventy or eighty percent. Like, you know, uh, the capability of dealing ambiguity would be very important for smaller companies, especially for startups. Awesome, thank you. So our time is becoming a little short already, and I would really love to also dig into the questions from um, our attendees. So I think one thing. Like, there's a lot to speak about that's obvious. We're not going to squeeze that into our 30 minutes here now. Um, but one thing that I also want to ask, and I think, like, it's inevitable right now to really, like, not ask that question. But um, in that special situation that we're in right now, like, life is full of uncertainty. Like, like we really don't know what's happening right now. Like, it's really, like, we don't know. So... In that special situation now, like a lot of things will change afterwards, probably. Like, um, what would you say is that impact now? Like, how do you see culture of innovation in that special period that we're in right now? Right. I, I hope I, I don't sound like I, I just got brainwashed by these organizations. Again, so I'm going to go back to <laughs> <laughs> what, I, what I mentioned earlier. So again, in, in this special period of time, it's, it's even more important to know what you what to focus right you focus what your customers need and i'll give an example just, just to make the conversation a, a bit more fun rather than just listening to the same customer obsession all the time <laughs> is that um so during this period of time so aws actually has reached out uh, to customers to to collect their needs mm -hmm. so we're not really making a decision saying hey we're gonna we're gonna cut the billions for, for those customers we're gonna um, you know, we're going to we defer the payment. No, no, we didn't do that. Instead, yeah. we we reached out, we collected data points to say, oh, um, fifty percent of the customers we have interviewed, they say they want defer the payment. Thirty percent say they want to cut the bill. Right. So what we did, well, we 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 took some of the requests to defer their payment. But what's even more important is that we actually created a massive campaign to optimize our customers cost on AWS. So this is the thing we are trying to focus during this period of time because we know this is what our customers really want based on data points. So I think again, like, you know, during yeah. this special moment, like, yeah. you know, how you can survive and just figure out like what um, yeah. your customers needs have, have altered or changed and what yeah. changes you have to make to accommodate that. Awesome, yeah. It makes sense. It makes sense. All right. So <laughs> I would love to ask you a few very short questions um, that are basically, they're unrelated to the topic here right now, but just to make things a little more fun before we go over um, and answer a few more questions. 
First of all, are you an early bird or are you a night person? Early bird was a night person. Good. Changed over the time. <laughs> oh, that is actually funny. <laughs> okay. Um, what would you say are your best or your most memorable, like, like, yeah, the most memorable but advice that you ever got? Write a document once you've got an idea. <laughs> okay, I guess I will. I will also definitely keep that in my mind. <laughs> that's how. That's how the company okay. influences people. You know, <laughs> that's the culture. Um, right? <laughs> exactly. Absolutely. <laughs> um. So. If you would be from another era or decade, which one would it be and why? Um, I'll pick like, you know, early 90s of China where there are so many opportunities. Like, you know, that's when Alibaba yeah. or like, you know, Tencent, you know, with the knowledge of the outside world, you can have so much to do during that period of time. So that would be my personal pick. Nice, nice. And now, probably personally for me, a very important question. Cat or dog? Dog, definitely, but I do have a cat. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> How does that work out? <laughs> Not enough right. space in China, so I love big dogs. So in, in the end, I just got a fat cat. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, coming back to what we're actually here for, to finalize it and to really go over to our questions. Can you maybe please give like a few key lessons or a few key points, how you develop or shape your culture of innovation. Right. Again, I think like, you know, I, I, I'm probably going to repeat what I said again, but I think, again, this is the power of culture, right? Really so quick. If I really, yeah. If, if I really have to pick would be be custom obsessed um, and write down your ideas, be data driven. <laughs> okay. I really believe that like, we will keep that in our minds. Awesome. So let us start with the questions now. Let me see where I, yes. I think a few of them we have definitely answered already. Um, if you, so from one person, we have the question, how do you suggest innovating using the past of looking to the future? Um, again, so if you, if you look at, well, not necessarily the past, right? you, you probably look at the, um, um, the, the current situation. So again, um, look at, um, um, so to really understand and dive deep on what your customers are looking for. So sometimes, so when we say this, right? So the basis there, like your margin is my opportunity, right? So we we'll always say like, you, you look at the current status, you say, what are the, the, the pain points of your customers? And that indicates what are going to be the opportunities in the future. So that would be my personal translation. Look at the current pain points and see if you can develop something to address that. Of course, the bigger the pain point is, the bigger the opportunity is. Okay, Warren, I am not sure if this is my microphone all, but I could not hear you speaking anymore. Can everyone okay. else hear Warren still speaking? Can you hear me now? <laughs> okay, I will continue my questions and I will check my sound. <laughs> okay. All right, I think this here is also a pretty interesting question. How do you get um, your, the suppliers in your supply chain buy into your culture of innovation? Basically, how do you integrate your suppliers of your supply chain into your culture? Um, I am not sure I know too much details about, about, about that part. Uh, that is actually a very good question. I, I personally have never really seen that. We have tried to implement our own culture to our suppliers or, or even our customers. So I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not sure I can answer that, that one. <laughs> okay, no worries, all good. Um, okay, so I think you've answered that a bit already before, but maybe you would love to add something. There is another question from Noah. He or she is asking, how do you as a team manager stimulate creativity amongst team members? 
Um, I think a couple of things like, you know, at least in my teams, we, or even in the bigger team, we never judge ideas, right? So I think um, um, different countries have different cultures. Um, but at least like within the company, it doesn't really matter which country we're sitting in. We first never judge ideas. Um, and, and second, we always push people to their limit uh, to say, hey, you've got this idea. Um, so what are your data points to prove that it's actually going to work? Okay. Um, and the third mm -hmm. thing is always um, we will try to say, hey, okay, this is a good idea. How can you make it even better? So we're always trying to push them to the boundary. We call that, again, there's another leadership principle called um, insist on a higher standard. So we say, hey, we don't judge you, but we, we need your data to prove that you're right, and then we would like to push you to a boundary to become even better. Okay, awesome. We have another question here. I think that's it. It's, it's also an interesting point. What would be the way or approach for you if the city that you're operating in um, is still operating itself in a, in a very traditional way, like how do you go about this part? Um, it's, it's certainly challenging. I mean, like to be honest, like doing business here in China for a company like you know, um, Amazon from the US, it's, 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 um, it, itself is a, it's a challenge, right? But ultimately, um, when you go down to the, the, um, to the foundation is like you need to have the right kind of people, you need to have the right minds. Right? It, it, it will probably be more difficult for you to hire uh, uh, people who can raise the bar both functionally and culturally. Mm -hmm. um, but in order to be able to operate um, well in a difficult situation, it's even more important for you to have the right because you have, you know, you have to be even more cautious and strict in making hiring decisions. Yeah. Get the right people. Yeah. Makes sense. Makes sense. All right, let me see. <laughs> I think this is a personal question that we can uh, squeeze in in between. Um, there is also a question. What was the main reason for you um, that you joined Amazon in the first place? Oh, um, well, I, I got this question all the time because I, I came from a very different background. Um, I, I am working for... Uh, Amazon Web Services, which is, which is the, uh, the largest cloud computing company in the world, right? Before, um, before I joined, I had nothing to do with technology. So and the reason becomes, uh, I would love to, to learn about technology. I always believed in technology isn't gonna change the world. Right? That's the first thing. And then second yeah. thing, um, so I was in consulting and I did investment. Um, I did business, like and for people who have been through business will always have this like dream of being an entrepreneur. Yeah. I was not bold enough to start my own company, so I picked a position within the big company that puts me really close to work with startups. So right. that's the second thing. And then the third reason was um, um, the, the manager who hired me was a very good friend of mine. He knows me very well and I like him too. So that's why. Nice, awesome. I love the answer and I love your culture. It's, it honestly sounds exciting if you hear about it. Um, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, all right, let me see how I will rephrase this for you. Okay, so there's one person asking um, about working backwards, what you were mentioning right in the beginning, right? So um, if you get a lot of requests from your customers, um, they might be confusing sometimes and it will also re not, like sometimes it will not give you room to really align. How do you organize that? Right. Um, so that, that, that goes to, um, again, that goes to another leadership principle within the company, which is called dive. So for any uh, ideas or requests um, you're, you're, you're getting or you're, you're, any proposals you're making, uh, you'll probably be asked five whys. If mm -hmm. uh, after that five whys, you can still explain that, uh, the chances uh, for this proposal to be um, quite meaningful is pretty high so in that way if you dive deep enough you'll figure out if it's the true demand awesome nice it's 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 interesting questions let me see there just came another one in 
<laughs> if you were a CEO for a day, what two things would you change to boost the growth of your brand? To, sorry, to boost the growth I, of my... I'll repeat. If you were a CEO for two days, uh, if you were a CEO for one day, sorry, what two things would you change so you can um, boost the growth of your brand? Right. Um, if, if we're talking about, um, it's, it's probably easier to, 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 to specify a situation. Let's say if I would be the CEO of, of Amazon, for yeah. one day, well, two things I would like. <laughs> um, otherwise, it's a bit generic. Um, I think the first thing, like, you know, really to make sure we have localized products. Yeah. Uh, the number one challenge for all those global companies in China is they do not, do not have localized products enough. So that's the first thing I want to have a true products that are designed by Chinese for Chinese customers. Well, customers in China, not necessarily Chinese. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and second, I would say I would, I would even like to raise the hiring bar even higher to make sure, like, you know, everyone. To make sure we are focusing on the long-term growth of this company instead of focusing on, oh, this person's going to help me deliver my quarter um, for the next month because yeah. he's going to bring in new customers. Instead, I'm going to say, hey, he's going to be a success within this company because it's such a great fit culture mm -hmm. and it's going to grow as well. Um, so, yeah, so uh, raise the hiring bar and then uh, localize products. Awesome. That's really interesting. Like. Maybe that comes from my side actually now. Like also if we speak about China, I think like, I mean, I also live in China, right? But I'm German. So of course, like my culture where I come from is still very different, like compared to the culture in Beijing where I live in right now. I also lived in different, like very other places as well. Where it's like, oh, that culture is so different to mine. And it's very interesting. Um, how would you, like, how do you see it then if you, have your team and like you're very international like is it is it harder that you actually manage to really like embrace your your amazon culture or is it actually easier for you to say like yes you localize but do you also like is it easier if you say you localize in your hiring process or what would you how would you say um okay well i would not say what the culture again the culture of this company can be translated in different ways, right? Like, for example, the, the, the term ownership can be translated in different ways in, in different culture contexts. Yeah. But as long as it can be translated into ownership in China, that's that's the principle we need to we need to adopt. We, I personally would never sacrifice, um, you know, that bar. But yeah. I would definitely make tweaks to make sure that it's more custom to to the local um, ways of looking things yeah 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 it makes sense it makes sense um okay there's one other question with your culture of innovation where will aws be um in 10 years time oh we are um, um I think we're about like, you know, 40 billion run rate company. We're growing like about 40% every year. So, so if you do this number, I think in 10 years, we're going to be, well, 200 billion, um, <laughs> you know, that's it. That's a, that's a huge, but, but the thing is, um, um, what I see uh, for this company is that um, it, will, it will ultimately influence the entire tech industry right? yeah. because it's such a, such a big organization that hires a lot of people and then people come and people go, but they definitely bring a bit of this, you know, uh, sort of, you know, culture or culture of innovation uh, yeah. you know, with them when they join other uh, organizations with other own companies. So yeah. I would see like, you know, those valuable parts that will probably remain and then in the end, you know, influence the entire, in the entire industry rather than just stay within this organization. Awesome. Thank you. All right. So, I think we actually managed to answer all questions that were here already during your fireside chat. To every attendee out there, please, if you have any more questions, ask them now. For everyone in China or who has WeChat, we also have a WeChat group. So if this is a lot of information right now that you need to process first and you come up with something later, still feel free to put your question in there. We're happy to help you to get that answered.
What if there's anything that you would like to ask Bora now when you're basically face to face? Please go ahead and ask. How maybe you can elaborate. <laughs> okay, maybe let's squeeze that in. It's funny. If you meet Chef Bezos, what would you ask him? Or taking his um, position? <laughs> what uh, would you ask no, him? I, I, I wouldn't want to be in his position to <laughs> fight against Trump all the time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Um, well, I, again, I, this is the same thing, right? This is basically what I would do, like, you know, if I were in a position of CEO of China, I was like, you know, um, let, let, let each of the market, like, localize the, the products and then let us truly listen to what customers really want uh, in this local market. Uh, because to be honest, like, you know, even though we, we, we say we are customer, you know, obsessed all the time, but uh, um, the, the product service design are still primarily based on what, let's say, the Western uh, you know, customers need, right? Because if you look at data points, we have, let's yeah. say, 80% of customers from the West, and obviously everything you're going to design is going to be based on their needs. But um, we're in a such early stage in China, so it makes sense, and in this country has got a huge potential, it makes sense for us to focus a bit more on the local customers' needs, and, you know, try to prioritize that if it's possible. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. I think actually we already really reached uh, the end of our event here now. Um, again, everyone, please feel free to ask uh, more questions. Um, we also going to record this or we have recorded this. So we're, we're happy to share that afterwards with you. If you would like to listen up on something again or something is still unclear and you would like to still get a better picture of it, reach out to us, but we're going to share it with you guys. So. Warren, thank you so, so much for your time and for your helpful insights. At least me personally, I think I'm already super excited. Like, I really, really like your culture of innovation at Amazon. So thank you for helping all of us. And I really hope that a lot of other people are motivated as well now to implement it in your own organization. And again, I hope everyone stay safe and um, like have fun, make the best out of the time that we have right now. It's not the easiest, but yeah, I think we all still need to move on. So yes, thank you everyone for joining us. And uh, thanks again, Warren, uh, for being here. Thank you, Katia. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Okay, bye-bye.